Hi, it's Lila with Fern Shadow Studio. Today I wanted to talk to you about the subject of crystals. Is it real or is it fake? So many of you have heard that crystals can help with curing headaches or help you in some other way, relieving depression, things like that. And I wanted to just dive into that topic a little bit more deeply, first from a science perspective and then from a folklore perspective. So just to give you a little bit of my background, I have been in the environmental consulting business for more than 25 years. And during that time, I worked with geologists, paleontologists, um, and people in the sciences. So I learned to appreciate geology, stones, um, mineralogy, paleontology from the science perspective. And I enjoyed stones so much that I became a rock hound. I uh, also um, started to make jewelry. And I think part of that was because it gave me an excuse to have all kinds of rocks around me, all different kinds of stones. So from that perspective, while I was making jewelry, I started to find many stories, folklore, myth about the qualities of stones and how they could be used to help people. And what was the most fascinating to me about this folklore was that um, whether I was researching uh, people's belief on a certain stone that was from Native Americans or from ancient Chinese culture or from Af African culture, I was found finding that they had the same beliefs about certain stones, that those beliefs crossed cultures and races and were just basic human knowing. So I had to investigate this from a science perspective and see if there was any basis for this belief. So now let's dive a little bit into, into some very intro science about crystals. Um, you might know that the early radios were called crystal radios. And during the 40s and 50s, it was somewhat popular to buy a kit and build your own radio. And the basic components of a simple crystal radio were a, a quartz crystal, a very thin wire called a cat's whisker, and a speaker. And the way it worked was that the quartz would capture the radio signal, the frequency, the energy of that frequency, and vibrate, and the vibrations would go through the cat's whisker into the speaker. If we look into the science behind crystals, we find that they are natural rectifiers. That means that they can alter a frequency, amplify it, impede it, change it in some way. And depending on the crystal, it affects different frequencies. It takes in different frequencies and it might have different effects on that frequency to either amplify or impede, raise or lower, or stabilize. So in addition to being rectifiers, many types of crystals also hold energy. So they're like a very, very weak battery, particularly quartzes and tourmalines. And so if you've seen a picture of someone striking a piece of flint to cause a spark to start a little fire, uh, what they are actually doing, it isn't friction that's causing the spark. They're actually, as they strike that stone, causing a little bit of that piezoelectric energy to, to be released from the stone. And that's what forms the spark. So, in addition to being rectifiers, they also hold their own energy. So now let's jump forward and think about this energy field that surrounds our bodies. In science, we call it a biofield. And in New Age, it's called an aura, but it's the same thing. 
It's basically a low frequency energy that surrounds the body. And when we become happy, peaceful, grateful, we're in prayer, the frequency of the biofield goes up. When we become angry, depressed, or fearful, the frequency goes down. And so imagine that we're struggling to stabilize this frequency, this energy field or biofield around our body. Uh, for a while in the 80s, there was a machine that was some, somewhat popular. You heard, heard about it. Uh, it was called a biofeedback machine, and they would basically hook you up to this little machine. And if you were stressed or, um, or out of sorts, your, the lights on the machine would be red. And as you calmed yourself and balanced your biofield back to a more harmonious level, the lights would slowly turn green on the biofeedback machine. And it generally was teaching people how to calm themselves and get centered and raise their fields back up. Now, the use of those machines have kind of dissolved away, I think in the favor probably of pharmaceuticals. Um, but the premise is still there that we do have the power to control this energy field. And if we think that perhaps we can bring a little rectifier in to our energy field that might give us a little bump and help us to balance that field, it only makes sense. Now, would I say to someone, oh, you have a headache, why don't you grab two garnets and hold them in your hands and your headache will go away? No, I would never say that to someone. But if we looked at some reasons that someone might have a headache. Maybe we can rule out some of the more physical reasons, such as infection, allergies, sleeplessness, too much caffeine. If we can rule out some of those things and get to more of a, of a basic problem, maybe there is a stone or crystal that is in a frequency that might help to stabilize that energy field. Now if you need immediate results, of course there are things like aromatherapy and, and uh, many other types of, of medicines or traditional approaches that might give you more immediate relief. But if you want long-term stabilization, of something, then a crystal might be the right thing for you to consider. So that's kind of a background on crystals and how one might think about the approach. There is no um, reason to be afraid of crystals or that if they, if they aren't the right crystal for you, um, they certainly can't hurt you. But I like the idea that you might be able to not in to, to not only enjoy uh, working with something that's good for you, but also just be able to appreciate the beauty of it. So thank you for now, and we'll talk to you again soon.